is using DNS to get more information. Now we're going to be going over a tool and this is called who is and it is a utility that is used to query the various regional internet registries to store information about domain names and IP addresses. And let me just show it to you about all the internet registries that are there. So I have Aaron.net open out here and these are the internet registries that provides the ISPs and looks over the internet control as a whole. So out here we have Afrinic, we have Apnic, we have Aaron, we have Lacnic, and we have Ripe NCC. So these are all the regions and all the different types of stuff that they support all the different countries. You can look at the map that it is supporting out here by just hovering over the providers. So as you can see, all these brown region out here is Africa, Afrinic. Then we have Apnic, which is this black or grayish thing which is India and Australia and quite a lot of Asia. Then we have Aran which is a lot of North America and the United States mostly. Then is Lachnik which is mostly the Latino side which is the South American part. Then we have the rest of Europe which is Ripe NCC and this is the part that Ripe NCC is providing internet to. Okay so that was all about the internet registries. Now let's get back to the topic and that is using DNS to get more information. Now for this we're going to be using a Linux based system. So I have Ubuntu running on my virtual machine out here and let me just log into it. So firstly we are going to be using this query called whois that looks up these internet registries that I just showed you. Let me just quickly remove this. Okay. So for querying information from the regional internet registries that I just talked about, you can use whois to get information about who owns a particular IP address. So for example, I could do whois and let's see, I could do who is Google or rather Netflix.com and we can get all sorts of information about Netflix. So we can see that we have the visit mark monitor. Then let's see, let's go up and look for all sorts of information that is being given to us by this who is query. So as you guys can see, I just went a little bit too much. Okay, so registry domain ID. We have the domain ID where it is registered. The registered URL is mark monitor. Okay, so this is for marking actually. Now the creation date is 1997. So you haven't realized Netflix been around for a long time and it's been updated on 2015 and the registry expiry date as we see is 2019 so it's going to actually go off this year. Then this is all useful information so we can see all sorts of domain status, the name server, the URL, the DNS sec that it says unsigned. This is very useful information that is being provided by a very simple query. Now if you want to know who owns a particular IP address so let's see. Did we get back the IP address out there? We should have got back the IP address, but it's kind of lost on me. So to get back the IP address also for a domain name service that you know, so you could use this command called dig. So you dig netflix.com. Now, as you guys can see that it has returned a bunch of multiple IP addresses. That these are all the IP addresses that Netflix is. So I could do something like if I was trying to check out who owns a certain IP address and for example, I have got one of these IP addresses, but let's just assume I don't know that it actually belongs to Netflix. So I can go who is 54.77.108.2 and it'll give me some information. So as you guys can see, it is giving us a bunch of information as to who this is and how it is happening. So we see that it is from Aaron.net and so it, we can very smartly assume that it's from the North American part. Now we can also see that it's in Seattle. So our guess was completely right. So it also gives us a range. So this is something very useful. So if you see, we now have the range of the IPs that might be being used by this guy. So we indeed have 54 and it says it goes up to the 54 there's also 34 now let's check that out and see what information we get so who is and let's check it out what was the ip that we were just seeing is 34.249.125.167 so 34.249.165 dot i don't know let's see you can also put in a random IP address. It doesn't really matter and it'll give you the information. So let's see, is this in some IP address? Even this seems to be an Aaron IP address and it's also based in Seattle 
and we get a bunch of information. So that's how you can use the who is query and the dig query to actually get all sorts of information about the domain name service and get information from a DNS basically. So now let's go over some theoretical part that is for DNS. So using DNS to get information. So firstly, what is a domain name service and why do we need it? So a domain name service is a name given to an IP address so that it's easy to remember. Of course, you it's easy to remember names and mnemonics rather than a bunch of random weird numbers. Now, this was mainly so that we can map names to IP addresses and we can get the a bunch of information from the host name resolution. So that's the purpose of IP addresses. Now, we will also be looking at how to find network ranges. Okay, now before we get on to actually moving on to how to find out the network ranges, let me just show you how you can also use who is. So who is Suppose you want to know the domains with the word foo in it. So you could go who is foo. And this will give you a whole bunch of things about how foo exists and all the sorts of foos that there is on the internet. So that was one interesting flag. And if you want to know how to use more about who is, you could just go dash dash help, I guess. Yeah, so this is all the types of stuff that we can do with who is. So we can set the host, we can set the port that we want to search for. Then we can set with the L flag, we can find one level less specific match. And we can do an exact match, do an inverse lookup for specified attributes. Then we can also set the source. We can set verbose type and we can choose for a request template. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff they can do. So you could suppose say who is verbose and suppose edureka.co. And it'll give you a verbose version of this is a ripe database query service. The objects are in RPSL format. The ripe database is subject to the, so okay, let's try something else. Like who is Netflix.com? Okay, I'm sorry. I was supposed to do verbose and I kept doing H. Silly me. So you do V and it'll give you a much more. Like this is a ripe database. Again, I think I'm doing something wrong. Okay, just for that thing. Okay, V and type. Okay. Or let's just see. That's let me just show you how to use it. Or primary keys are returned. Only primary keys. Okay, let's see. Let's try that out. Okay, so it seems to be that this is a ripe database query service, and the objects are in RPSL format, so it won't really work for that thing. And it also says that no entry is found because it's this error. So this is for some later lessons. So for now, I hope I gave you a good idea of how to use who is. Like you could just go who is, then some IP address like 192.168.101 or some gateway address like that. Or you could just go for a domain name service like Facebook and get all sorts of information about Facebook when the query actually returns you something. Okay, so let's move on to network ranges now.